Okay, so um, brothers. Yeah, base gimel. Okay, great gimel. If someone read the Shema but did not hear it, he fulfills his obligation. Rabbi Yossi said he has not fulfilled his obligation. If one read the Shema without enunciating the letters properly, Rabbi Yossi says he has fulfilled his obligation. Rabbi Yehuda says he has not fulfilled his obligation, and if one read in reverse order, he has not fulfilled his obligation. If one read and erred, he must revert to the place where he erred. A skilled workman read while on the top of a tree or a row of bricks, which which they are not permitted to do in reciting tefillah. Uh, a bridegroom is exempt from reciting the Shema in the, for the first night until the first Saturday night, if he had not yet performed the deed. It happened in the case of Rabbi Gamil that he read the Shema on the first night following his wedding. His disciples said to him, have you not taught us, not master, not a bridegroom, as he said, from reading the Shema on his first night? He said to him, I shall not listen to you to absolve myself from the kingdom of heaven, even for a moment. Okay. So this is talking about his uh, marriage to his second wife. Uh, the next mission goes back a little bit in time to the passing of his first wife. Um, he, he, washed, uh, he washed himself um, he, um, on, on, uh, on the first night after burying his wife. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how his Talmidim were with him while he was taking a bath, but probably he told him, he, he probably told them I need to go and take a bath. And they said, and they said to him, um, "Didn't you teach us that uh, that Avelim are not allowed to to bathe?" So here is the heter of istinus um, that we that we lean on quite heavily. Also, um, in the nine days uh, before Tisha B'av, we're supposed to be following all the customs of Avelus there, but. Uh, or m- many of the customs of Avelis, one of which is supposed to be not washing. But um, nowadays people are uh, istinous and um, just uh, I don't feel right. You can't, you can't deal with not, uh, with not actually washing yourself. But it's, uh, so it's the Tanuk, it's the Rechitza uh, Tanug that you're not allowed. You're not allowed to just go and have a shower because ah, I love that hot water on my back. And yeah, that's, uh, that's what's the problem. Okay. Kishemes Tavi Avdo. So uh, Rabban Gamliel had a very famous Ebed Knani called Tavi. And uh, Tavi is quoted also in Masechah Sukkah he, he, uh, in, as known right. of, uh, of sleeping under a bed. And uh, um, at, at any rate, he, Tavi was, uh, was a very smart guy. And he, and he passed away and Kibbala loved Tanchumim. So Rabban Gamliel uh, basically he sat, he, he sat on the floor for a bit and people came and, and comforted him. Um, he, since when do you receive do you, do you take comfort from for a slave first of all even if he was jewish he's not your relative and and all the more so that he's an evid Knani. he's not even he's not in, even fully jewish he says he, he was a talmud chacham he was a he was an Ebed Knani who was a Talmud Chacham. He knew Halacha, and uh, and it's like you know, um, a person. It's it's similar to the Halacha that if a person's Rebbe dies, he's supposed to sit on the floor for a bit and and be makabel He said this is like he was he was he was like that, and anyone who learned from him should be able to sit and, and receive Tanchomin. Okay, Mishnah Ches Chasan. Imratzali cross Kriyas Shema Laila Rishon Kore. Tanakama comes and says that um, that any chasan, because so this is kind of this is reverting back to the Mishnah about uh, about Rabban Gamliel who uh, who on the first night was wanted to say Kriyas Shema. They say anyone is allowed to do that. Anyone who wants to be makabel on himself to to say Kriyas Shema, even after he just got married, is allowed to say Kriyas Shema. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer Lo Kol Aratzeli Tolis Hashem Yitol. You can't. You can't just. Uh, it's, it's presumptuous. It's uh, it's Yuhara that a person uh, can say that he's like uh, that he's like uh, Rabban Gamliel and he can and he can say Kriyas Shema um, with with full with full kavana. But interestingly, now of course the halacha has inverted because um, because now because that this halacha would be applicable to somebody who always says Kriyas Shema with such kavana. That uh, that you can say that he's that that um, he's going to be able to say uh, Kriya Shema with the Kavana and he is and he's makbid on on saying Kriya Shema with the Kavana, um, but 
nowadays it it would actually be the reverse it's it's like almost nobody is able to say that they can that they always say kriya shema with perfect kavana and and they like and they're fully into it to the point where that they would be distracted by the by having the mitzvah of uh, you know of uh, of biarishana with his wife um and that is going to throw him off is that like oh so you mean are you telling me that if you weren't just married then you would then you would have proper kavana is that what you're saying that's uh so the halacha has has reverted to the fact that 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 a chassan on the, on the night of his wedding still has to say kriya shema. So we don't uh, we don't let him off the hook for that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's it for brachas. Right. Let's um, go to uktsin. Uh, it's a base te test. Yeah. Regarding a cucumber that one planted in a flower pot and it grew and extended. They are, they are measured as they are, but if they can um, contain a hollow, one must compress the hollow. Sponge bread is measured as it is. If it contains a hollow, one must compress the hollow. Regarding the meat of a calf that swelled and the meat of an old animal that shrank, they are measured as they are. Um, uh, Avdotic says, um, the white... The white the white leaves combine in the case of a karabi because they are food, and in the case of lettuce, they protect the food. I'm just a, why something wrong. I did something wrong. I'm sorry. I went the I went the wrong way. I'm sorry. I know I did. Yeah, they are mentioned. They are, they are measured as they are. Rosadik says the right leaves combined in the in the case of um. Why is this? I'm no, doing no, something wrong. No, no, something's wrong over here. You, I, it's me. It was, it's it's me. I'm just sorry. You're doing fine. No, I was. I was. I'm going to do it again. All right. Regarding a cucumber that one planted in a flower pot and it grew and extended out of the flower pot, it is tahor. Neb Shimon said, "What is the basis of purifying it? Rather than name, the tummy portion remains with its tumma, and the tahor portion may, may be eaten. Dung vessels and mud vessels through which the roots can go out do not render plants susceptible to tumma. A perforated plot, power plot does not render plants susceptible to tumma, but one that is not perforated does render plants susceptible to tumma." What is the minimum measure of the hole? Large enough that a small root can grow out of it. And if one filled it with soil to its edge, it is like a board that has no rim. There are some items that require hexa, but some do, do not that some do not require thought. Others that require thought and hexa, others that require thought but not hexa, and others neither hexa nor thought. All foods that are normally used for consumption by humans require hexa, but do not require thought. Okay. Okay, Zavim, Aleph, hey. If one, if, um, if one had a single uh, Zavim mission that is as lengthy as three emissions, which is equivalent in duration to the time it takes to walk from Gad Yavin to Shiloh, which is equivalent to the length of time two emergence and two dryings off, he is a full Zav. If he had a single Zavim mission, as lengthy as two emissions, he conveys tumor to couches and seats and requires minimum immersion in a spring, but is exempt from an offering. Yossi says, they did not say that a single lengthy admission is counted as multiple admissions unless it is as lengthy as three. If one had one Zav admission by day and one during the night period, or one Zav during the twilight and the next day, it is not if it is not known that part of the admission is from the first day and part from the next day, the status is certain with respect to both the offering and tumor. But if it is uncertain whether part of the omission is from the first day and part of it is from the next day, <clears throat> his status is certain with respect to Tuma, but uncertain with respect to the offering. If he had an Zav mission on two executive days during twilight, his status is uncertain both with respect to Tuma and with respect to the offering. If he had one Zav mission during twilight, his status is uncertain with respect to Tuma. All can become tummy through the admission of, of Zav, even converts and even slaves, whether emancipated slaves or unemancipated slaves, a deaf person, a deranged person, a minor, a castrated person, and, and a naturally sterile person. Regarding a tumtum and androgen, we assign to them the astringencies of males and the astringencies of females that become tummy through a discharge of blood like a female and through a white, a white admission like a male, and the tumor status is one of uncertainty. Okay. Toros. Well, uh, Toros, right? Yeah. Regarding two saliva specimens, one of which is tummy and one of which is tower, we suspend tumor on account of touching the saliva, carrying it, or causing it to move in the private domain. 
If a contact in the public domain while the saliva is moist or for carrying it, whether it is moist or dry. If there was a single specimen of saliva and one touched it or carried or moved it in the public domain, we burned Tuma on its account. And needless to say, Tuma is buried, uh, buried, I'm sorry, buried on its account. And um, on its, no, rather than to say Tuma is burned on its account in a private domain. There are uncertainties that are said sages rule Tahor and uncertainty regarding drawn waste in a mikvah and an uncertainty of Tuma floating on the surface of water. An uncertainty of Tuma concerning beverages with regard to acquiring Tuma, the uncertainty is Deen Tame. Whereas with regard to carry, conveying Tuma, it is Deen Tahor. An uncertainty concerning Tuma of hands with regard to acquiring Tuma and conveying Tuma and to becoming Tahor is Deen Tahor. An uncertainty in a public domain, an uncertainty concerning rabbinical edicts, an uncertainty pertaining to Kulin, an uncertainty concerning Saratsim, an uncertainty concerning afflictions of Saras, an uncertainty concerning Naziris, an uncertainty concerning firstborns, and an uncertainty concerning sacrificial offerings. An uncertainty concerning Tuma, which is floating on the surface of water, is Ritaho, whether in containers or on the ground. And Reb Shimon says, in containers, the uncertainty is Deem Tame, but on the ground, it is Deem Taho. The Yehuda says that uncertainty regarding to one's ascent into the water is ruled Tame. The uncertainty regarding to the ascent from the water is ruled Taho. And when Rossi, Rossi says, even if there's no space in the water for anything more than the person's bulk and the Tuma, he is Taho. Okay. Okay. Tamed. Okay. Al of base. Mm -hmm. One who wishes separate some ash from the altar, arises early and immerses before the appointed Kohen arrives. Now, at what time did he, the appointed Kohen arrive? Not all the arrival times were the same. At times he would serve as a rooster's, serve, arrive at the rooster's cry or close to it, either before or after it. The appointed one would arrive and knock upon the temple gates and they would open for him. And he said to them, whoever has immersion, immersed has, should come and participate in the lottery. And they held the lottery, whoever won, won. He took the key and opened the minor door and entered the hall of fire into the courtyard. The Kohen entered behind him with two torches of fire in their hands, and they were split into two groups. One walked in the colonnade toward the east, the other, they, and these walked in the colonnade toward the west. They would check as they walked until they reached the place of separation of the Kavitim, and the two groups met one another. They would say, it, oh, it is well, it is well, and the appointed makes Kavitim, who makes the, 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 the appointed makers of Kavitim to make the Kavitim. Uh, the, the one chosen to remove the ash from the altar would go to remove the ash, and they would say to him, be careful not to touch the utensil until you sanctify your hands and feet from the labor. And behold, the shovel is placed in the corner, behind the, between the ramp and the altar, west of the ramp. No person entered with him, and there was no lamp in his hand. Rather, he walked by the light of the fire. The Kohanim neither saw him nor heard the sound of his footsteps until they heard the sound of the wood that been cotton branches into a wheel for the labor, and they would say, the time has come. He sanctified his hand to feet from the labor, and he took the silver shovel and sent it to the top of the altar, and he cleared the coals to its side and to that side, and then scooped from the innermost con consumed coils, and he descended. When he reached the floor, he would turn his face to the north. He walked to the east of the ramp, about 10 amos. He piled the coals upon the floor at a distance of three uh, thrucum from the ramp, and the place where they would deposit the crop of the bird and the ashes of the inner altar and of the menorah. Okay. He followed... That's, That's it. it. That's it. End of the parak, yeah. And we have Baba Messiah. Okay, Gimel Allah. If one deposits an animal or a temple with another and they're stolen or lost and not wishing to swear, the Shoma pays for what he said. And an unpaid Shoma may swear and be, and be quit. If the thief has found, he pays the twofold payment. If he has slaughtered or sold the animal, he pays fourfold or fivefold payment. Whom does he pay? The one to whom the deposit was entrusted. If he swore that he did not wish to pay, if the thief is found, he pays the twofold payment. If the slaughter or, or sold animal, he pay. If, if he has slaughtered or sold the animal, he pays the fourfold or fivefold payment. When does he pay? The owner of the deposit. Whom does he pay? The owner of the deposit. If one rents a cow from another and lends it to someone else and it dies naturally, the renter must swear that it died naturally and the borrower must pay the renter. Rabbi Yossi says, how does the person do business with another's cow? Rather, the cow should be returned to the owner. If one says to two, if I robbed, uh, I robbed one, one of you of your uh, mana, and I do not know which one of you, or the father of one of you deposited a mana with me, and I don't know which one he get is, 
He gives this one a mana and that one a mana because he admitted it by himself. Yeah. Okay. And then we have the hey. Where it's customary to do work on the ninth of Av, we may we may do it where it is customary to not to, uh, where it's customary not to do work. We may not do it. Yet in all places, scholars are idle. The Shimon said, Gamil says a man should always adopt the behavior of a scholar. But the common sayings there they used to work on the eve of Pesach until midday, while in Galileo they did no work at all. As in the night, Beit Shammai forbid work, while Beit Hillel permitted it until sunrise. Red Mayer says, any work which one began before the 14th, he may finish on the 14th. And he may not begin it initially on the 14th, even if he did finish it before midday. The Gekommen say, practitioners of three crafts may work on the eve of Pesach until midday. They are tailors, barbers, and laundrymen. The Yossi Yehuda says, also shoemakers. We may set up coops for chickens on the 14th. If a brooding hen escaped, we may return it to the place where she, if she died. We may set another in her stead. We may sweep away from under an animal's feet on the 14th, but on the festival, we may only clear it away to the sides of the stall. We may take utensils to and bring them back from the house of craftsmen, even though they are not needed for the festival. Okay. That's it. We done. Okay, great. Um,